Board Ape Yacht Club, all of these words essentially meant nothing when you put them together up until around like a year ago. And now this is a cultural phenomenon. Can you describe it? I think what makes Board Ape Yacht Club special is that it's culture on the blockchain. And when most people think about Board Ape Yacht Club, they do think about NFTs. And what's cool about NFTs is that they are a truly unique technology. You can apply that to anything. You can apply that to how you buy a house, how you buy a car, but the proof of concept that has like broken through, right, when we're thinking about culture and we're thinking about what people think about, they think about art. Right. You can sort of think about Board Ape Yacht Club as an experiment with like playing with kind of these three fundamental core ideas. Identity, ownership, and utility. So identity for one is, in a really simple way, it's how you sort of see yourself and how you present online. So a lot of people use their board apes as their profile pic on Twitter. Um, it's completely yours. You can do whatever it is that you want with it. You can monetize it. You can create a brand out of it. You can create a band out of it. That's going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. You can do anything you want. You know, you can partner with other people in the community and do things which we're seeing happen. And that's important because it really empowers the community, but it is also very much a tenet of Web3. And if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Why does someone pay $250,000 for a board eight? I think it goes back to culture and community and also momentum. I think some people really want to be on the edge of culture and really want to be part of the next innovative thing and experience. And for some people, they're willing to pay, they're willing to pay for that. You have celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Paris Hilton, you know, uh, Jimmy Fallon buying in. What do you think it was about this that really struck that cultural chord? It was a key to a club. And that's special. That's different. Because the idea was never, we're going to release the, this art, and you own this art, and that's it. We're going to walk away. The idea always was that we're going to release this art, but this art is a key to the club. And so then those people who aped in early at $220, they were early members of this club. Um, but as the club grew and it became something really incredible, you get to see this like really interesting dynamic of people within the community where last year at Ape Fest, I saw this with my own two eyes, it was also just Ape Fest was amazing, but I get to see this like teacher who aped into the community early and she's like a really, really active part of the community, you know, and she was literally two inches away from Chris Rock. You worry as it grows and becomes even more exclusive, right? The only people who can really afford it are the Chris Rocks or those types of folks. Do you worry that you won't be able to bring in the teachers and the folks who um, help them make it that type of special that you're talking about? BAYC is just the beginning. What do you mean? We have Yuga Labs. The company has a very, very big vision. And we plan to do a lot of things and that means growing our community, that means growing the greater NFT community, um, really playing with even more fundamentals of Web3. And what we're so excited about is that for the first time, there's technology, there's protocols that allow you to take those values and literally put them into practice with the products that you make. Like, we plan to build more, more of those roads um, so that more people can kind of come on this journey with us. Can you take me back to the origin story of Board 8 Yacht Club? It was almost exactly a year ago. Garga, who's one of the founders, texted Gordon 
um, with, hey, let's make an NFT. So Garda and, uh, Garga and Gordon were both really into crypto. They were really active in the community, but they are writers. Um, that's actually their background. Um, they are storytellers, they're creatives. And so like crypto was this thing that like they were fascinated by mm -hmm. and they like loved, but they were never able to actively participate in. Right, in there was a barrier to entry, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly, because it was technical. Yeah. And they're not technical, they're, they're writers, they're creatives, they're yeah. storytellers, like that's, that's what they do. And then NFTs happened. And it was, everything was about the art behind it and the beauty and the story and the culture. And that was a moment of an unlock where they were like, oh my God, we can be a part of this now. We can, we can contribute to this now because this is something that we can do. Originally, the project was this like really beautiful Miro-esque aesthetic. The utility was gonna be this like collaborative art piece that everybody in the community was gonna be able to do together um, because they were so inspired by this like art idea. And so they called me with like, hey, we're gonna do this thing and like, you know, just explaining the idea. And I kind of giggled and was like, oh yeah, I mean, but people are just gonna draw penises. Mm -hmm. And that was it, like I was just like, I didn't think anything of it. We hung up, but like the stupid thing that I said that I never would have thought about right. transformed into, well, what if they do draw pen penises? Yeah. And where do people draw penises? And, you know, it turned into, well, it's a bathroom. Right. You know, it's a toilet stall and it's a dive bar. Mm -hmm. And, but it's not a dive bar. It's a yacht club that's a dive bar, but it's in a swamp. And it's gonna be this like future vision of Miami. And, you know, it's all of these like bored apes. Mm -hmm. um, and they just created this like, story and this world mm -hmm. and like you know Garga then texted Tomato who is an engineer and I think Tomato texted Sass who's another engineer so like while Gordon and Garga were like building out all of the characters and the world and actually like the story and the lore um, Tomato and Sass were building everything out on blockchain and this incredible vision this like crazy story came to life. You're referring to them by pseudonyms, right? Absolutely. So like, for instance, you know my name is Nicole. Yeah. Um, and I go by Nicole. Um, but I tip my hat to the community with V Strange. It's like a pseudonym that I use on Twitter and in Slack and in Discord um, because that's, that's how the community kind of walks through this world. Um, and why is that? I can't speak to why the community does what they do because it's a collective of individuals. But I can say that I believe and the company believes that um, identity is a personal choice. You should be able to walk through this world however it is that you wanna walk through this world. And, you know, there's these arbitrary rules, you know, this, this idea of like, okay, it's your real name at your real job and then later online, you can be whoever it is that you wanna be. It has this like domino effect where it actually ends up giving you a more equitable footing with everyone. Because now you're not, you're not Lori, you're not a woman, you're not from a certain place. It's not about where you went to school. It's not about your ethnicity, your what you think, your what you do. It's a way of saying 
you know, you don't have to be this, you can be whatever you want to be, but it doesn't have to be the thing that you were given. Like, your real name can be irrelevant. There's this, like, misconception that, like, because you use a pseudonym, you're not accountable. And that's not true. Like, you have a reputation, I have a reputation. If you go and ask people that know you, they know who you are. You know, this community, this is who they are. These communities aren't just communities, they're becoming really powerful entities, right? Um, you look at something like Board Ape Yacht Club, which is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful NFT project out there right now. And, and there's a whole debate of folks who say the identity of their founders should be known because when you're this valuable as a company, um, there's gotta be some kind of accountability. Um, the same accountability that other companies are afforded. Our company is built on blockchain, right? That's what we're doing. And blockchain is a digital receipt. So if you wanna know what we're doing, you can see it. It's transparent. And what's not on blockchain is public. You wanna know how much of a creator's fee we take on OpenSea, you can look. Anybody can. And so I would say that as a company, we're probably more open than most LLCs in the United States right now. And that's the other part of this. We're registered in the United States. We pay taxes just like everybody else. We are not hiding. Um, we're completely open, we're completely transparent, and we're also completely accountable to all of our actions. Should people know the people behind the projects that they're signing up for, or will people be misguided um, or misled if they don't know who those folks are? We're at the very beginning of this space. I think that means that these projects, you know, whether we're talking about NFT collections or something else within the Web3 space, this culture, this community, crypto in general, it might not be for everybody. And that's also okay. So I think there's, there's always risks associated at the beginning of anything. It's the next frontier, it's the wild west, you know? It's, it's opportunity and hope and excitement, but on the flip side of that, it can be charlatans and scams and security threats. A journalist revealed the identities of two of the founders. They call it being doxxed, right? Having your identity um, put out there. How did the founders feel about that? How did you feel about that? We believe in freedom of the press. We believe in journalistic integrity. When I got the phone call saying that um, they were gonna release their identities, I asked for time so that we could tell their families, so that we could make sure that they were safe. I was told I had 30 minutes. And folks in the community when this happened said, you have to be careful because there's safety issues. Can you explain why? People who have made a lot of money in crypto um, and it's attracted some nefarious characters, um, and it has put people in severe jeopardy. Um, there are kidnappings, just very, very bad stuff happen. And there is a, honestly a misconception that the founders of this company are crypto whales. Um, and releasing their identities and frankly only giving us 30 minutes um, was very, very dangerous for them and their families. Do you think their identity should have been revealed? I think if there was a great, greater reason for it, it probably, you know, I think we would have supported it. It's just how it was done and, and why it was done that I'm, I, I don't understand yet. The project obviously has so much hype and so much support, 
there's also been criticism. Some people connected some of the in images to racist tropes. Um, I'd love to give you the opportunity to respond to that criticism. This project was started by four friends in the middle of COVID, a year in, when they needed probably as much as we needed a weird, silly, whimsical story. And that story is about these apes in this club, like I've mentioned. That's a yacht club in a swamp. And it's apes because aping in is very much a nod to this community, to crypto enthusiasts, to people who aped in early. So the, the story is about them. One of the founders is Jewish, one is Turkish, one is Pakistani, one is Cuban. Guy Oseri, who's one of the partners that came in later last year, is Israeli. I myself am Cuban, and I'm actually first-generation American. The idea that we're neo-Nazis or alt-right is offensive, it's hurtful, it's totally untrue. That's really personal to you, that criticism. This community has a really, really deep memory. They, they know who we are based off of our actual actions. Um, they, they know that the founders were living and breathing in Discord with them 24 hours a day, supporting them and answering questions and being truly a part of the community themselves. And that memory doesn't only work for us. It also extends to other people and their actions and what they do. So it's it's almost like, what do you think is real? That a group of Jewish children of immigrants, each and every single one of them, created this neo-Nazi alt-right project with their entire hearts and souls or that the person that's lobbying these claims actually has a published history of doing this to popular Web3 projects in an effort to discredit them and pump their own derivatives. And to the people familiar with all of the players involved, it's completely obvious. What do people get wrong about Board Ape Yacht Club? I think there's a misconception right now, and part of it is because we're early, right? Um, you've seen those videos of journalists saying, what is this internet? Mm -hmm. What is this email? But you believe that we are at this point that's as big as kind of those other points. Absolutely. Why? Web 1, the early days of the internet, it was read. And so you as a regular person could now read emails. You could read websites. Um, that's what you did. It was a very sort of passive interaction with the internet. And then with Web 2, you could write. And what that means is that you can now post photos on Flickr, you can comment, 
You can blog. You can like things. You can post YouTube videos, right? So all of this YouTube, Facebook, Web 2, that's writing. And Web 3 means own. And we're really, really at the beginning of it. So I'm gonna talk about things that I can't point to. I can't say like this company or like this or like that because they don't exist yet. But the protocols exist. The technology exists that will enable these things to happen. That you will be able to not only own your identity on the internet, but you will be able to take it with you wherever you want. That interoperability, that decentralization. What would that look like? Oh God, it can look like so many things. Let's say, you know, when Yahoo bought Flickr, let's say that instead of taking it and forcing people to log in with Yahoo, they just shut it off. You would lose all of that content. Yeah. And so with Web3, that's yours. You can take it with you wherever you want. You own that content. You plan on creating new projects, new venues, new protocols um, to try to make Web3 more accessible? Mm -hmm. Can you give me specifics on how? Give us a sneak peek, help us understand, because I, I think I'm, I can't ape into board <laughs> Yacht Club right now. It's a little past my, my time, so. No. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but we can't expect something that might be a little bit more accessible to folks who might not be able to, to afford Board Ape Yacht Club. Anytime, like anytime soon. Great. Like in the next month. Oh, that I can't say. How big do you think Board Ape Yacht Club could be one day? I don't know how big Board Ape Yacht Club can be. Um, that's not to say that I don't imagine it to be big, but I think, I hope, Yuga will be big and that we will be able to create lots of things that are unique and special and speak to the greater community in different ways. Do you believe that this next era of the internet will be better than the last? Yes. 100% yes. All in yes. Web3 is the first time that these like heady, very academic concepts of ownership and interoperability and identity and you know decentralization, Web3 lets you actually take these things that are just like very much a, for a specific type of brain and put them into practice. And, and build products with it and put them in the hands of people. And I, that is so unique. That is so special. Um, and it, that literally didn't exist before. Do you think even the word NFTs, like is this, it will evolve, right? In the, in the next couple of years, these larger questions of identity in an emerging internet. And that's really, NFTs and these projects are our way into that. Is that correct to say? Yeah, it's the proof of concept that has broken through. Right, but there will be more. Many more. Do you know what they'll look like? I hope to build some of them. What do you want to build? Do you know that like, that line in Back to the Future, where we're going, there are no roads? Mm -hmm. I want to build the roads so that everybody can, can go there. Why? Because it's fun, and it's scary, and it's weird. And because ironically, it's not boring. <laughs>